Are all your family members Christian? Mm-hmm. I was born into an Eastern Orthodox family, but my family members are not devout Christians. They don't read the Bible, and they don't pray. Ah, so when did you accept God's last day's work? In the summer of 2020. At the time, my sister Albina and I found a video by the Church of Almighty God called Awakening from the Dream. This video said the Lord Jesus had returned. This got us curious, so we downloaded the Church of Almighty God app and connected with brothers and sisters from the church. They bore witness to us of how Almighty God had expressed many truths, performed the work of judgment, and had already made a group of overcomers. I was so excited, so I read more of Almighty God's words. I saw that His words were full of authority and power. They were the truth. I realized that no mere person could express such words. This was the voice of God. Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus. Hmm. My sister and I felt quite inspired. We happily accepted Almighty God's work in the last days. We often gathered with brothers and sisters online and fellowshiped God's words. Ah. But to our shock, when our father saw us attending Church of Almighty God gatherings online, not praying with old icons, he said that we were worshiping a different God and betraying the Lord Jesus. So what did you think when your father said this? I thought what he said was wrong. Through reading the words of Almighty God, I learned that Almighty God and the Lord Jesus are the same God, the same Spirit. They represent God doing different work in different ages. In the Age of Grace, God took the name Jesus to do the work of redemption. And now, in the last days, God takes a new name to do the work of judgment and cleansing. Almighty God is the new name that the returned Lord Jesus has taken. Believing in Almighty God isn't betraying the Lord Jesus. I was welcoming the Lord's return and following the footsteps of God. But my dad hadn't read Almighty God's words, didn't recognize God's work, so he didn't know that Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus. Hmm. Did you tell your father about this? I tried to explain to him, but he refused to let me speak, and he clung to his views. He even scolded me. He said if he caught us reading Almighty God's words again, he would beat us. And even if he went to prison for beating us to death, he'd do it to keep us from believing in Almighty God. I was shocked to hear this from my dad. I never imagined he could spew such vitriol just to keep us from believing. That day, he shooed the two of us out of the house. For several hours, we sat outside in our pajamas. I got really upset, so I prayed to God. God, I'm feeling a bit weak now, but I must be strong and endure this. No matter how my father impedes me, I will keep believing in you. Please give me faith and strength. Just then, I recalled a passage of God's words. You must possess my courage within you and have principles when facing loved ones without faith in God. Also, for my sake, you must not yield to any dark forces. Lean on my wisdom to walk the perfect way. Do not let Satan's schemes take hold. Put all your efforts into placing your heart before me, and I shall comfort you and bring you peace and happiness. God's words warmed my heart and gave me strength. Through God's words, I saw that no matter how my father impeded me, he was still in God's hands, so I shouldn't fear him. I should pray to God to bestow me with courage so I could get through this. After that, even though my father would read me the riot act, keep me from brothers and sisters, and would even check my phone, I still did my best to escape his monitoring. I would often hide in the bathroom, shower, basement, or garden, so I could chat with brothers and sisters. Hmm, yes. Only by reading more of God's words can we have the faith to stand up to such suppression. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Hmm, later, we trained as newcomer waterers, and we secretly took on duties. But the newcomers needing to be watered gradually grew, so I fellowshiped and gathered with them in my room every day. My father suspected that I was gathering again, so he increased his monitoring of me. Not only would he check my phone, when I was alone in my room, he would quietly slip in to see what I was doing. He put security cameras in the house. He even had my little brother monitor me, and he gave him gifts in return. Sometimes, I had no choice but to delete everything related to the church and my duty on my phone and step away from the gathering group chat. But ultimately, my father caught me practicing my faith. That day, he was drinking again, and he started berating me, even saying blasphemous things about God. I couldn't take it anymore. And so I said, I believe in the true God, the returned Lord Jesus. Almighty God has expressed many truths to save mankind from the disasters and free us from sin. This is my only chance to attain salvation. I'll keep my faith. If you keep trying to stop me from believing in Almighty God, I'll have no choice but to leave here and live somewhere else. How did he react? Mm, he didn't say anything. And for a while after that, he barely said anything about my faith and he stopped suppressing me. I thought that all of this had passed. I never imagined this was the calm before the storm. One day, as I began a gathering, my sister ran in and said, our father demanded to see my phone. But I didn't give it to him, suspecting that he might break it. Your phone was very important to you. Mm-hmm, yes. My phone was the only way for me to connect with the church, and the only way I had of reading the words of Almighty God. Hmm. So then, I contacted a sister from the church, explained the situation, and the newcomers I was watering were reassigned to her. And then I went and hid my phone. That day, my father invited my uncle over for a visit. He asked him to stop us from believing in Almighty God. I didn't know what tactics they would use to suppress us. Just then, some of God's words came to mind. Almighty God says, in every step of work that God does within people, externally it appears to be interactions between people, as if born of human arrangements or from human interference. But behind the scenes, every step of work and everything that happens is a wager made by Satan before God and requires people to stand firm in their testimony to God. Take when Job was tried, for example. Behind the scenes, Satan was making a bet with God, and what happened to Job was the deeds of men and the interference of men. Behind every step of work that God does in you is Satan's wager with God. Behind it all is a battle. When God works, cares for a person and looks upon this person, and when he favors and approves this person, Satan trails closely behind, trying to dupe the person and bring them to harm. If God wishes to gain this person, Satan will do everything in its power to obstruct God, using various evil ploys to tempt, disrupt, and impair the work of God in order to achieve its hidden objective. What is this objective? It does not want God to gain anyone. It wants to snatch possession of those whom God wishes to gain. It wants to control them, to take charge of them so they worship it, so they join it in committing evil acts and resist God. Is this not Satan's sinister motive? In warring with God and trailing along behind him, Satan's objective is to demolish all the work God wants to do to occupy and control those whom God wants to gain, to completely extinguish those whom God wants to gain. If they are not extinguished, then they come to Satan's possession, to be used by it. This is its objective. I realized through God's words that, 
my family's suppression of my faith was Satan's test and disruption. Satan didn't want me to follow God and be saved by him, so it used my family to attack me and force me to betray God. This was Satan's treacherous plot. I thought of how Job was attacked by Satan when he was tested. All of his property was destroyed, his children died, and his whole body broke out in boils. Despite such immense suffering, Job was able to bear witness to God and humiliate Satan. I knew I should emulate Job. No matter how much I was suppressed, I had to keep my faith in Almighty God, stand firm, and humiliate Satan. God's words give us faith and strength. Yes. So what did your uncle think about your faith in Almighty God? As soon as he came in, he started urging us to give up our faith. He said, You've left behind the Lord Jesus, and you've stopped going to church. You've betrayed the Lord. So I said, Almighty God and the Lord Jesus are the same God. Almighty God has expressed millions of words and revealed countless truths, such as the mystery of God's 6,000-year management plan, the inside story of His three stages of work, as well as mysteries of God's names. He has also revealed the root of humankind's sinfulness and the reality of our corruption by Satan, showing us the path to salvation. Many people all over the world acknowledge Almighty God's words as truth and the voice of God. They've welcomed the Lord's return. So how could you say that we're betraying the Lord by believing in Almighty God? When the Lord Jesus came to do His work, many people left the temple to follow Him. Would you say that they betrayed Jehovah God? Only those that fail to hear God's voice and follow the Lord when people bear witness to His return are really betraying the Lord. When he heard this, my uncle got enraged. He said, Look at her. She just ignored everything I said, and then she lectured me. She is proselytizing, and she's trying to rope me into her church. And then my uncle's wife spoke up. With a mocking and derisive tone, she suggested that I should just get married, like other women, and build a stable family and working life, instead of spending all of my time practicing faith and proselytizing. So I shot back. Since I've become a believer, I've read a lot of Almighty God's words and gained many insights. I have learned the meaning of life and what is the most meaningful to pursue in life. These years, as wars, pandemics, and famines intensify, can fleshly pleasures guarantee our safety or protect us from calamities? Only by accepting Almighty God's work, attaining the truth, and casting off sin can we gain God's protection from calamities and enter His kingdom. This is the only road to salvation. How did they respond to your fellowship? They didn't say a word. Seeing how firm I was, they called in my grandfather and another uncle to gang up on me. Having your whole family against you must have been a big test. Mm, it was. But I thought of how Chinese brothers and sisters are able to stand strong in the face of persecution and peril. I wanted to bear witness for God and humiliate Satan just like them. And so I prayed to God, God, I don't know what my grandfather and the rest will say or do to me going forward. Please fill me with faith and strength. As soon as my granddad arrived, he started berating me and my sister. He even threatened us with his belt. He said, if you don't give up your faith in Almighty God, you're no longer my granddaughters. Hearing him say this, I thought, I'll never give up my faith in Almighty God, even if my whole family abandons me. The Lord Jesus said, Whoever shall deny me before men, him I will also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. People can abandon you. You can survive by yourself. 
but if we're abandoned by God, then it's all over. So no matter how they impeded me, I wouldn't deny God. I staunchly said, I know Almighty God is the true God. No matter what you say, I won't give up my faith in Almighty God. My sister also said she wouldn't abandon her faith in Almighty God. Everybody in the room was really shocked by what we said. My uncle became totally enraged. He grabbed my phone and grilled me. Who are you calling on this phone every day? Who are they? What are their names? Give me their phone numbers. I'm going to report them to the police. He then told me to unlock my phone. When I didn't respond, he angrily said, It seems that you're a lost cause. You won't listen to anything we say. We should send you to a psychiatrist for treatment. They didn't understand why you were so steadfast. Right. In their eyes, faith was just some sort of religious conviction. They look down on people who expend themselves and sacrifice for God. After that, other family members took turns, scolding and berating me. But my sister and I never wavered, and we argued back. They eventually got frustrated and went home. Did they keep oppressing you after that? Hmm. They did not stop there. Two days later, my father showed us videos that were made to discredit the Church of Almighty God. They offended me because I knew that they were false and were slandering the Church. I might not have believed in Almighty God for long, but I had read His words and understood some of the truth. I knew how to become freed of sin and be purified, and knew what things in life were meaningful to pursue. I practiced viewing things based on God's words and had gained some discernment of good and evil. I had already made some improvements in some areas, and my faith in Almighty God had benefited me a lot. I felt a sense of inner peace and fulfillment and was convinced that this is the true way, the path that God was guiding us along. So I said to my father, you haven't looked into God's work in the last days, so you believe these online fallacies. These are the lies of the devil. I believe in the true God. After I said this, my father just cut in and berated me again. Later on, my uncle came back and started pressuring me. Kiana, we are your family, and we all love you. You may not think so, but this is for your own good. You'll thank us later. Leave that church as soon as possible. His words reminded me of how Satan used the wife of Job to attack him. Job's wife said to him, do you still retain your integrity? Just curse God and die. But Job didn't give in to her. Instead, he chided her for speaking as a foolish woman speaks. And now, I was persecuted by my family. They said it was for my own good, but really it was to force me to abandon Almighty God. I was fed up with their lies and deception. So I just sat there quietly, and I ignored them. There was so much that I wanted to say to them, but I knew they wouldn't listen to me. Seeing that I wasn't giving in, my father took his belt and whipped me across the face and hands several times. My hands stung with pain and tears streamed down my face. And then, they took away my phone and my sister's phone. We lost our ability to connect with the church. After that, my father continued to monitor us. He forbade us from reading God's words. He followed me wherever I went so I couldn't be alone. He'd even watch my facial expressions. If it looked like something was on my mind, he would yell loudly. 
Don't you dare think of that god of yours. He was even trying to control your thoughts. You must have felt so repressed in that environment. Yes. But then I recalled some of Almighty God's words. Believers and unbelievers are not compatible. They oppose each other. Anyone who does not believe in God incarnate is demonic, and moreover will be destroyed. Who is Satan? Who are demons? And who are God's enemies? If not resistors who do not believe in God. God exposed the substance of the unbelievers. I used to think no one was closer than family. But after being oppressed and obstructed by them time and again and thinking of God's words, I finally saw their true colors. Despite their believing in the Lord, they weren't interested in seeking when they heard the incredible news of the Lord's return. They didn't listen for God's voice or welcome the Lord. They even used every means they could to keep us from accepting Almighty God, spouting all kinds of judgment and condemnation of Him. They were God-hating, God-resisting people. As they were God's enemies, they were also mine. I was not the same as them. You gained discernment through being oppressed? Yes. Did you feel weak during this ordeal of yours? I did. Despite having gained some discernment of them, I was constantly monitored by my family, couldn't attend gatherings, and couldn't even speak with my sister in private about spiritual matters. So over time, I began to feel very weak. At that time, I thought of a passage of God's words. Do not be discouraged, do not be weak, and I will make things clear for you. The road to the kingdom is not so smooth. Nothing is that simple. You want blessings to come to you easily, do you not? Today, everyone will have bitter trials to face. Without such trials, the loving heart you have for me will not grow stronger, and you will not have true love for me. Even if these trials consist merely of minor circumstances, everyone must pass through them. It's just that the difficulty of the trials will vary from one person to another. Trials are a blessing from me, and how many of you come often before me and beg on your knees for my blessings? Silly children, you always think that a few auspicious words count as my blessing, yet you do not recognize that bitterness is one of my blessings. Those who share in my bitterness will certainly share in my sweetness. That is my promise and my blessing to you. God's words filled me with a warm feeling. I felt he was quite close to me. God understood what I was thinking and going through. He used his words to encourage and comfort me. I knew that entering the kingdom of heaven was so arduous, and the true way was constantly persecuted and rejected because Satan rules over this world. Satan doesn't allow God to come here to express truth and save mankind, much less allow people to follow and believe in God. As a result, people that do are oppressed and persecuted. In the Age of Grace, many were persecuted and even martyred due to their belief in the Lord Jesus. Now in the Age of Kingdom, God has incarnated again to save mankind. In China, vast numbers of Almighty God's believers have been arrested, persecuted, beaten, and tortured by the CCP. But they continue to be steadfast in their belief in God and bear witness for Him. Faced with my family's persecution for my belief in God, it was an incredible honor for me to bear witness to God before Satan. All of my difficulties contained God's good intentions. I was lacking in faith and couldn't see through Satan's plot. So God worked through my family to teach me to rely on him and seek the truth to gain discernment. This situation helped me to understand the truth and grow in stature. 
After realizing God's intentions, I felt more at ease and less anxious. And I chose to rely on God. As long as God was at my side, it wouldn't matter who opposed me. With God's words as your guide through this oppression, you became increasingly steadfast in faith. Yes, thank God. During that time, mm, my family kept monitoring and suppressing us. We couldn't read God's words. I felt so awful that I considered running away from home. As I saw it, running away was the only way out. If I left my home, I could practice my faith normally. But all the avenues of escape were blocked from me. My father was always at home, and I didn't know how to evade him. Other family members were monitoring me too, and I had no money and no place to go. I worried that if I ran away, my father would call the police on the brothers and sisters. I was deeply depressed and always crying. I didn't want anyone to see me like that. During that time, I lived in a state of constant fear. When praying in my room, I always worried that my father would barge in, that he'd break down the door and yell at me, maybe even beat my sister and me. I had no idea how much longer he would persecute us. Thinking of how my brothers and sisters could gather and do their duties, while I lacked that opportunity, I felt envious of them. And so I prayed to God. God, I'm having a difficult time practicing faith at home. I want to leave my home so I can do my duty freely. Please open up a path for me. One day, I was finally able to evade my family to read two passages of God's words. While undergoing trials, it is normal for people to be weak or to have negativity within them or to lack clarity on God's will or their path for practice. But in any case, you must have faith in God's work and not deny God, just like Job. Although Job was weak and cursed the day of his own birth, he did not deny that all things in human life were bestowed by Jehovah, and that Jehovah is also the one to take them all away. No matter how he was tested, he maintained this belief. In your experience, no matter what refinement you undergo through God's words, what God requires of mankind, in brief, is their faith and their love for Him. What He perfects by working in this way is people's faith, love, and aspirations. God does the work of perfection on people, and they cannot see it, cannot feel it. Under such circumstances, your faith is required. People's faith is required when something cannot be seen by the naked eye, and your faith is required when you cannot let go of your own notions. When you do not have clarity about God's work, what is required of you is to have faith and to take a firm stance and stand witness. When Job reached this point, God appeared to him and spoke to him. That is, it is only from within your faith that you will be able to see God. And when you have faith, God will perfect you. Without faith, he cannot do this. If many things come upon you that do not align with your notions, but yet you are able to put them aside and gain knowledge of God's actions from these things, and if in the midst of refinements you reveal your heart of love for God, then this is standing witness. If your home is peaceful, 
you enjoy comforts of the flesh. No one is persecuting you, and your brothers and sisters in the church obey you. Can you display your heart of love for God? Can this situation refine you? It is only through refinement that your love for God can be shown, and it is only through things occurring that do not align with your notions that you can be perfected. With the service of many contrary and negative things, and by employing all sorts of Satan's manifestations, its actions, its accusations, its disturbances and deceptions, God shows you Satan's hideous face clearly and thereby perfects your ability to distinguish Satan, that you may hate Satan and forsake it. Amen. What wonderful words. Yes. Through reading God's words, I clearly realized his intention. I saw that, in our faith, we must go through refinements. Only through these refinements can we achieve true faith in God. Take the story of Job. After he underwent a trial and stood firm in his witness, his faith in God increased, and Satan crawled away in humiliation. I knew I should take Job as my role model so I could stand firm throughout my trial. But I had shown myself to be really lacking in faith. When I could gather in a comfortable environment, my faith was strong. And I'd say, no matter what happens, I will never blame God. But when I was oppressed by my family and locked in the cage of my home with no freedom, I became negative and weak. I didn't abandon my faith in God, but I was always complaining. I wanted to avoid hardship, seek a leisurely life, and a relaxed form of worship. This clearly showed that my nature was God-betraying. I thought of how steadfast Job had been. When Satan tested and attacked him, he didn't complain to God a single time. He never made any irrational demands of God, and he never questioned God for allowing such things to happen to him. Job submitted to and revered God, and I did not. I realized that God used this situation to test me and to perfect my faith. If I wanted to practice my faith in leisure, avoid the situations God devised and didn't learn from them, I would end up with nothing at all. It occurred to me that, despite my having suffered a bit, God was always by my side to guide me. When I became weak, God's words comforted and encouraged me. So how could I complain to God? I lacked conscience. I used to envy those brothers and sisters who were not oppressed by their families. But now that I thought about it, who ultimately gains more? Someone who lives in leisure and grace, or someone who experiences oppression and hardship? Ah, the answer is clear. All is within God's grasp and under His orchestration. God doesn't do meaningless work. Only God knows what situations will be best for my life progress, and not me. So I should submit, and I should seek. When we understand God's intentions, we're able to submit and see how everything God does is good. Yes. So how did you attend gatherings after that? God opened up a path for me. Ah. Before long, my father found employment, so he was out of the house a lot. During that time, my sister and I were able to safely gather in fellowship on God's words. As for the surveillance cameras my father installed, they not only failed to work against us, they actually protected us. Each time my father returned home, we saw him on the cameras and could cut off our gathering. Once he left again, we'd go back to it. 
Oh. When my father was at home, we couldn't attend gatherings. So we'd ask permission to go to a store. And then we'd take the opportunity to fellowship outside in the park. That's great. In 2022, my church leader assigned me to continue watering newcomers. And later, I became a supervisor. I've kept doing my duty despite my father's suppression and hindrances. This experience has given you more and more faith in God. I've experienced God's words, beheld His almightiness and wisdom, and gained faith in Him. I've learned to rely on God and practiced eating and drinking God's words to resolve my issues. I've gained discernment of non-believing family, and I now know how to deal with them. I never would have learned any of this while living in leisure. God's work is so wonderful and practical. I thank Almighty God from the bottom of my heart. Thank God. Thank God.